There are a lot of reverb modules out there that are complex and it can be hard to comprehend how the entire thing works. This does not have to be the case. This video will go over how to make a simple reverb module based on a single quad channel op amp chip. This module won't have a lot of the complex CV controls, but think of it more of a starting off point for more complex designs you could do yourself. So let's start by looking at the schematic. Input signal comes in here. This op amp powers the drive coil in the reverb tank. The drive coil in the tank I will be using has an impedance of 8 ohms, which requires more current than this op amp can deliver. To solve this, transistors can be used to boost the power of the op amp. Feedback on this op amp is also set up for an 8 ohm load. For more information about setting up an op amp to power the drive coil of a reverb tank, I recommend this document. It covers everything you want to know about spring reverb, link in the description below and it has information about setting up op amps to drive coils with impedances other than 8 ohms. The boosted signal leaves to go to the drive coil through this RCA jack here and returns from the receive coil through this jack here. This op amp boosts the receive signal back to your rack levels. The feedback for this op amp is also impedance matched to the receiver coil in the reverb tank. The full wet signal of the reverb is output here. The reverb signal is also routed to this crossfader so then it can be mixed with the incoming signal. And it's also routed back through this potentiometer and back to the drive stage for feedback. With feedback, less is more unless you want a super loud self oscillation. So that's why this 100K resistor is here to limit the amount of signal that can be fed back in. To lay out this schematic for etching, a few jumps had to be added to get things to route. And the jacks and pots were all swapped to solder pads since these components would not be attached directly to the PCB. Here it is all laid out. Now with the legend turned off, and this is what we will be left with once the PCB is etched. Next step is removing the paint we don't want on the PCB blank with a laser. and cutting out the faceplate. Now while the PCB is in a ferric chloride bath removing the copper we don't want, the jacks and potentiometers can be mounted to the faceplate. And now that the PCB has been etched, cleaned, and drilled, all the components can be added. The PCB will be mounted to the faceplate right about here, and now all the connections between the faceplate and the PCB can be made.
And here we have the finished module. Once we make sure the magic green smoke is not going to come out, module can be mounted on the rack. RCA jacks marked send and receive are connected to the in and out connections on the reverb tank. The tank I'm using is a mod RMOD-9AB3C1B, which has an input impedance of 8 ohms and an output impedance of 12,000 ohms, which is why the impedance match of the driver and receiver circuits we built earlier was so important. If you're wondering where to get a reverb tank like this, I bought mine on Amplified Parts. Now let's hear what it can do. Let's start with the dry signal. Let's add in some reverb. Now the full wet signal. Back to a mix, and now with feedback. Less feedback. Let's try some percussion sounds. First the dry signal. Input was a touch strong. Now more reverb. The full wet signal. Some feedback. Back to the dry signal. Now let's get real reckless and patch the signal through a Synthrotech echo and then into the reverb. Start with a little reverb. some feedback. full wet signal. Well there you go, reverb with a single quad channel op amp. I hope you all enjoyed and thanks for watching.